Hello everyone, my name is Jaybird and welcome back to Lake of Voices. So last time we did a thing. We got the ending. Oh yeah. Um so we're just gonna start a new game. We can just skip all this. I'm sure you're forgiven, Bemele. I know you. Um, I believe we and should. And I believe you. Thank you. Uh, place my hand over his. Shh. Put Bemily forward. Kick it off. So you're staying behind? This one we're waiting for the timer. Um, encourage her to keep going. He gently runs a thumb over the top of my hand before he releases it. There's a clear sense of affection to it. Ooh. Stay close. We need to run. Um, put a, put a, do nothing. I can't risk it. Uh, I have no idea how long this is actually going to take. I have to see Bemily. Lingering for only a moment, I start following the trail Bemele took. It doesn't take him long to notice I'm there, and he slows his pace so I can s so I can easily catch up. We fall into step for a short while, neither of us speaking. Eventually, we come to a thick stand of trees and wordlessly weave our way through the branches. Once we're hidden by the foliage, Bemele leans against a tree trunk, hung, head hung low, hung low, <laughs> hung low, oh, he's hung, oof. Negativity radiates off of him, but I don't know what I should say. Fortunately, he breaks the silence. I apologize for back there. I, no I nod firmly. His reply isn't unexpected. For as long as I have known Bemele, he has had a tendency to let his temper flare, then regret, regret it later, after processing his thoughts. I know that dealing with these sorts of situations calmly is part of the job, but I cannot tell myself everything is fine or that none of it matters. Sure, I can feel something without it being anger, but I've not figured that out either. Oh, can I skip this? <clears throat> Oh, whoops, I didn't know that. Then I will continue to support you. Oh, I didn't know I could skip this. Continuing on, Bemele and I cross the island in search of Margaret. Out of nowhere, a shudder runs down my spine and I barely stop myself from checking behind me. Darkness flickers through my mind and I hold my breath. I p a pat on A pat on my back brings me back into the light, a reminder that I am not alone. I look up to see Bemele, his touch more comforting than words could be. Suddenly I do not know how, I do, I know I do not need to hide my emotions. There's no reason to act as though nothing is wrong when it is. Bemele already knows. I have hidden my emotions for so long that it's, that it is still my first instinct, but somehow I sense an assurance from him. Bemele will be there to remind me that it is okay, and to support me when I feel I might break from the weight of our experiences. I give Bemele a hesitant glance. He notices and returns my gaze, staring into my eyes. Oh boy. I feel the words spill out from my mouth before I realize what I'm saying. Would you like to take a walk with me? Oh! Look at me. I take a moment to part some brush out of my path before explaining myself. We could pass around the edges of the forest where there's less in the way. 
There doesn't need to be a purpose to the walk. It only needs to be a way to spend time together. Thank you for explaining what a date is. <laughs> I would prefer that to not doing anything. I would be delighted to accompany you, Kika. I'm glad and by his response, though it only makes me feel all the sillier for suggesting it. Perhaps it may be better not to, after all. We'll be walking all throughout the night. I believe I've spent quite enough time resting. If I'm being honest, I think I need a break from all this waiting around. My lips curl into a smile. All right. We'll do that then. After we speak to Margaret. Of course. That's our first priority. Hooray. Thank you, Bemele. Yeah, thank you, Bemele. Bemele moves a little closer to me. I'm happy to. I'm not sure if we'll be of much help, but there is no way I'm leaving Margaret all alone here for longer. She may want someone to talk to. It takes longer than I had hoped to, tra to track through the brambles, but we find her in, in decent enough time. Margaret begrudgingly lifts her head as we approach, enabling me to see that her face is damp and tear-stained while her eyes are red and puffy. She's been crying. I shift uncomfortably on my feet. Is something the matter? Margaret releases a humor humorless laugh. I take it the guards are doing their rounds. Bemelay and I each steal a glance at one another. Bemelay lightly chuckles. It seems we are. Old habits die hard. Well, that's nice. She sp speaks somewhat curtly, but at least she no longer seems as depressed. I'm happy to report that everything's in order on this front. Good to hear that. Margaret isn't saying what she, what's actually on her mind, but I have no way to reach her. Is that everything? Bimley scratches his chin. We can leave you for now, if that's what you'd like. Wouldn't want to be a nuisance. That would be most appreciated. I'd like to have a little time to myself before we return back... out there. Hmm. We'll be around if anything comes up. Thank you, for that, and for stopping by. I smell at her. Bemelay gives a wave. Be well. Goodbye. <laughs> Farewell. The two of us leave Margaret, as per her request. I swallow thickly as we go. I can only hope that Margaret will be able to sort through her thoughts before it is too late. Da -da -da. Bemelay lightly squeezes my hand, garnering my attention. Garnering! Sorry, that looked like an M for a second. Garnering my attention. So, would you still be interested in our little stroll? Yes. Yes. That would be nice. Yes, it would. Bemele beams at me. We best be heading out then. Hooray! Bemele pointedly tightens his grip on my hand, despite already holding my attention. I return his squeeze. Squeeze! A bashful expression washes over him, though it's not enough to make him let go. We, re we reach the edge where the shore meets the forest and trek along it. Bimley makes make small talk ju on just about anything and everything. It reminds me of our journey before we reached the lake. The more I dwell on it, though, the more I realize how drastically things have changed in a matter of days. Bimley's discourse forms a mirror from one time to another in my mind, casting all that has changed in glaring silver. He swings our hands back and forth slightly as he continues to lead the conversation, trying not to let me become too absorbed in my troubled musings. After winding our way around a large stretch of the island, a massively overgrown tree intersects our path. I move to push the offending branches out of the way, but Bemele stops me. Please, let me handle this. It's a man's job. I let my arm fall as I watch him. Bimley un oh wow. Bimley unsheathes his sword and chops the branches down with a single bow blow. Oh dang. He releases a hearty laugh and I grin at him, the sheer audacity of the action enabling me to ignore his sword misuse. It's been far too long since I've taken it out. Oh boy. At this rate I'll forget how to even use a sword before we arrive. Hmm, I see. 
and sheathe my own sword. Ooh! And level the honed edge at honed edge at him. Would you be up for a bout of sparring? Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. He doesn't miss a beat. I'll accept that. Oh my god. I step onto the sand to give us a little space, and Bemele eagerly trails behind me. Oh my god. You sh you you do you do do it. You do <laughs> you do it. <laughs> Just you do it. <laughs> Yeah, boy. Once we find our footings, Bemley assumes a defensive stance, centered, center turned away from me, and sword drawn in front in front of his body. I do the same as I circle him swiftly, being sure to stay just out of his striking distance as I watch for the slightest tell of an opening. Oh, whenever he attempts to put some space between us, ah. Uh, Yes, I'm taking screenshots of everything. Don't. Shh, 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 shh. Whenever he attempts to put some space between us, I dart in towards his back, forcing him to stay mostly in place to defend. It takes three sharp jabs before what I was hoping for happens. As he turns to face me, one of his feet lands slightly out of place in the, f in the loose sand, and I take my opening, striking immediately. Bimley regains his balance just before I make contact, though, pa parring and using his heavier frame to force me back a few steps even as I jump out from the sword, block sword lock. Hoping to catch me off balance from his push, he, he strikes, but I weave out of the way. Bemele has more strength and a larger striking distance than I do, so I've learned to capitalize on my higher agility and smaller hit zone when facing him, even if I usually prefer a more grounded strategy. We trade blows, neither of us ever scoring a hit, but both keeping each other on edge. For a little while, time flows past us easily, and there's nothing that matters but avoiding an attack that will never be lethal, grinning as our steel clashes. Noticing my labored breathing, I call off the fight. Stop. We can't exert all our energy here. Bemele releases a winded chuckle. <sighs> Thank God there's at least one of us responsible enough to point that out. You're welcome. I smell and return my sword to its scabbard. Bimley does likewise and glances over at me. Would it perhaps be alright to at least finish our stroll before sitting back down again? We shouldn't go the entire length of the island, but I suppose we can walk just a little longer. It's a deal! Hooray! Walk closer to Bimley, yes. I allow myself to drift closer to Bemele. There's not too much space between us as we walk side by side. Bemele views me from the corner of his eye and looks more than pleased. For a brief moment, all of the troublesome circumstances seem to float away from our minds, and we enjoy each other's company. I wish it could go on for so much longer, but it's only a while later that I have to speak up. We really should rest before nightfall. I'm fine with that idea. Bimele leads us over to the area where the guide mentioned we were going to meet. He lowers himself down onto the ground and stretches out right there, presumably intending to wait until the guide arrives. That's a little more dramatic of resting than I planned. I walk over and make myself comfortable next to him, though not as comfortable as he has made himself. It isn't very long until Margaret appears. She doesn't comment on our resting positions, however, she's clearly smirking about it. Hello, Margaret. Are you still holding up fine? I would rather speak of anything other than that. I think we can manage that. Three of us quietly wait for the guide's arrival, occasionally 
chatting with one another as we rest. The sky turns orange as sunset comes upon us. Well, guys, that's going to be it for this episode of Lake of Voices. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this and would like to see more of this game, then leave a like down below, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, ring that notification bell, and remember, die safely. Bye-bye!